Welcome back to Careful Boys. We have with us Mr. Chad Mayate. Hey. We were talking about this mildly, I think a few weeks back, and uh, I'm still curious about it. What's the biggest amount of money that you guys have declined over a job? Oh. Over any kind of work that you just said like, no, I'm not gonna do it. That's easy for me. What's that? What's that? So Verizon hit me up to do a promotional video about facing your fears, and I had to jump out of a plane. I was offered $25,000. I said no. That's all you have to do is skydive? Because you have to stay awake. So you thought you were gonna, gonna pass out? Yeah, I thought I was gonna pass oh, out. Shit. Oh, you mean you wanted to take a sedative? I, I get vertigo. Oh. So oh. I didn't think that I would be able to stay awake because if I pass out and I'm a big guy, it's an issue. So they're like, you have to stay awake. And I'm like, so you can't tandem jump with another dude. Well, they're gonna tandem jump with you, but I'm at that time I was almost 300 pounds. Ain't nobody doing that for twenty five thousand dollars, dude. You need like four extra parachutes, probably. <laughs> <laughs> hey, number one, I need I need you to take off your shirt right now. <laughs> hey, man. Hey. Have you guys ever seen a fucking polar bear just sit on an ice cube? <laughs> this one is motherfucker. With no fur. I mean, yeah, no, yeah. Not Coca-Cola shit, like the yeah. meme shit. I was going through, you know, YouTube will suggest videos every now and then. Just give me 80 days, dude. And it was the Hawaii video. And I'm looking at this video, I'm like, who's this fat fuck in this video? And it's this guy. I didn't realize how much weight he gained. Dude, I've never been able to call somebody else fat. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. You walked in last time fucking hot and you're like, Ant, you were fat. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. different! That came out of nowhere! Hey, 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 this fool's face was like, yo, Nick what steals. the fuck? <laughs> Nick Steals! Nick no. Steals from Target! No. That you're, you're confusing things right now. It wasn't the fact that you were fat that was the, the topic, it was that you were fat and ugly. Because you can't be fat. <laughs> you can't be fat and ugly. You're a very good looking skinny guy, but when you- How's June be in Hawaii going? It's going great, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's going fantastic. But let me go back to that. When you get fat, you look like a child that would have been left in China and never picked up. That's what you look like right now? No. Hey, let me tell you this right now. I was you. left in China. <laughs> hey, me too. And there we go, dude. <laughs> My mayate, let's go. <laughs> I, I love that Nick put his hand up right on Nobody High Five. That was an air high five. Rollback photo Got of you? you. He's, yeah, he's talking. What is, when did you see him fat? I saw this random photo popped up and oh, I Google like, searched it. I was like, who's this fucking back order cook? <laughs> it was this little dancing, just really chubby. And I started dying laughing by myself. Oh, my oh that was great. But you look great now. You yeah. also. He looks, because when he got, he got some also. At his stages, that's true. Chubby, he still looks the same. But when you got big, you were unrecognizable. <laughs> Are you talking Damn, about he is going in. That's like a fashion wow. Version? Oh man. Like the, the ugly the house? house? Yeah, the Thatcher New thing where he used you to illustrate his point. I oh, hate okay. how brilliant you are. <laughs> <laughs> man, that's all you. <laughs> it's you disgustingly great, brilliant. <laughs> it's all found footage. Right? You look great now. Uh, speaking of jobs you declined. I think uh, the biggest know. one that I, and maybe this one was the same as Bart, but we both did an audition for In Living Color. <laughs> oh, and they were bringing it back. It's and, probably like 20, 2011, maybe twenty ten. Both fucking nailed it, and um, the Wayne's brothers wanted both of us on. And during that time, they were offering about what was it like fifteen grand a show? It was f like fifteen grand an episode. An episode for yeah. the first wow. season, guaranteed thirteen episodes or something. So that wow. we would, depending on how many episodes were on, but they said that they liked us so much. I thought there would only be room for one Asian, but then they picked us both. Showed. Pilot tanked after that, didn't fucking reshoot it. They hated the talent on there. And we decided to keep JK because at the time they saw YouTube as a competition. So they was like, you guys gotta quit your YouTube, your JK film shit, we don't want that shit on there. You guys gotta come a part of the In Living Color brand. And I'm like, dude, that's a big fucking deal. But we have this team, which most of them aren't even with us anymore. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? Damn, he's Damn. just gotta add that should have done that. <laughs> The crazy thing. Well, I was loyal to them is what I'm saying. In the moment, I was loyal to that shit. And, uh, it never went through anyway, right? Yeah. So, but the crazy thing is the juxtaposition. So like, this is during a time where we're still doing like, you know, those Asian shows. So we were coming back, we, we got fucking like five scripts that we had to memorize because we were flying directly in to get the audition. From a college Asian show. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then so we're like, fuck, we're trying to memorize on the plane, trying to pull an all-nighter. We get there and then we see all the other comedians that were like, uh, performing during that time, like you'd like Katie Tatara, like mm. at, at, at the Laugh Factory, improv, whatever, right? So we're like, oh fuck, we're going up against actual stand-up comedians in the casting room. Then we see Keenan Wayne walk by, and we're like, oh fuck, this motherfucker's here. So we hear from the casting director, 
uh, because they're missing a couple of like key parts, he's directly involved in casting this time. Mm. So me and Jar are fucking shitting bricks, pacing out. And it was my first audition. Yeah. I never had an audition we're before. Shit, we're shitting bricks outside of the uh, the audition room, and then the fucking lady comes out. You know what? He just wants to see everyone improv. So all the stuff we've been fucking oh. memorizing, we're like, we're just gonna fucking throw this shit out the window. And uh, we both did our audition, and I think both me and Joe made, and he had not only him, he had his family there, so that he wants to see like if his kids could laugh. So both me and Joe made him and his family laugh, and then that's when the casting director called us the next week. They said, uh, we got it, and then so we had to go all of a sudden to like some high rise, like um, LA, like lawyer, entertainment lawyer person. That person like represented, I don't know, like the fucking Twilight people, because they're the biggest at the time, and then they showed us the contract from Fox and it was yeah 15 grand an episode guaranteed 30 uh, 13 episodes possibly eight seasons we're just looking at it just doing the numbers like Ooh, this is fucking crazy because it was like <laughs> it was like 300 G's when our YouTube channel is making like four grand you know we're like oh this is fucking crazy and like, oh, we really got to talk this out so we go back to uh, our house which is where we're working out so that that's the juxtaposition like going like, mm. on to into right. Beverly Hills to meet to our office in a living room to our yeah. office, the living room <laughs> good old days with our fucking free interns what should we do guys <laughs> you should have saw, saw this fool's fucking entertainment console for his TV <laughs> <laughs> with cinder blocks yeah. of plywood. <laughs> yeah. You know what? His dog would piss on it all the time. <laughs> 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 we are so poor. <laughs> no, it was it was because this fool was trying to be an industrial look. <laughs> like, he was trying to be artistic. <laughs> so this fool went to Home Depot, bought cinder blocks and a plywood because he thought that shit was like, oh, I got the fucking art walk look, you know? Yeah, yeah, Especially yeah. a Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think the funniest part when I saw his dog oh, pee on oh, it, oh, that shit killed me, dude. He yeah. goes, hey, dude, I made my own TV console. And literally, his dog Tyson at the time starts pissing on it as he's showing me the console. I cried like And then because it's a raw cinder block, you just see. It soaks it. Yeah, it soaks it, and you see the pee travel oh, up the cinder right, block. Right, right. Like the like wet cinder It's so yeah. funny. Yeah, it soaks into it. I'm like, that's like going to smell like shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was so. Yeah. God, we were so poor. But yeah, so uh, we kissed the. And we, so we, we kissed. And, but we were so loyal. <laughs> we yeah, we were so loyal. And then Fox was like, they didn't see YouTube as a benefit. They saw it as uh, competition. They saw it as threats. Okay. Yeah, so they're like, stupid. you have to shut your YouTube channel down for like seven years or some shit like that. So me and you're like, fuck, I don't know about that. But then it was 300 G's, which is an enormous amount of money to us at the time. And then so we ended up uh, <sighs> saying no. They shot their first season. I guess Keenan wasn't happy with this, so it never even aired. Damn. They didn't like the talent that they had. And we would have been shut down for seven years if... Oh, it would have still... Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Oh, damn. But that was crazy to like audition in front of like one of your idols. And there wasn't like a shining bonus where like, oh, even if the show doesn't go, you still get this. They would have guaranteed. Me and Joe barely fucking knew how to read back there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I just learned how to read like a like a year prior. What? You're signing at the top. You're like, the yeah. fuck are you doing? <laughs> I don't know how to read, fool. If, if they took your channel, they, they would have guaranteed money for sure. There's no way. Absolutely not. Back then, nah, they fucking treated entertainment Containers like a bunch of fucking pieces of shit. They're like, you're lucky to lick my boot. So this is how crazy it was. Um, no one had our number. We didn't get any contacts from anyone in Hollywood, right? The minute we they heard that we're gonna be on the show, not even like officially, we started getting phone calls from everywhere. fucking everywhere. WME, CAA, all this crazy shit, right? So we had a meeting at CAA. We go there and there's like, hey, I'm a booking agent. Oh, I'm a, I'm a this yeah. agent. I'm a, so we're me like eight agents. Everyone's all happy sitting in this big conference room. Then this guy walks in, he sits on the chair. Oh, fuck that guy with no shoes? Yeah, he comes in, sits like this with fucking highlights oh, in the hair, really? and he goes, so who are these guys? And then they're like, oh, they're uh, upcoming YouTubers. They're like, thank you, and he just walks out. Whoa. And then now it's left to the other like junior agents to clean that shit up. We'll be in contact, we'll be in contact, we'll definitely contact you, and uh, we'll see you later. Exactly how it is. Yeah, and we're like, yeah. oh, what's what up, cut? Fuck. And this will start blasting him on site. <laughs> <laughs> with, with his hella ARs. Uh, Y'all didn't know I banged though, did you, homie? With his eight, 10 ARs. With his 10 ARs. <laughs> it was crazy, man. <laughs> Today's video is brought to you by Upstart. Saying goodbye to high interest credit card debt is one of the first steps towards financial independence. But the interest month after month can feel like you're in a never ending hamster wheel. And that's where Upstart comes in. Upstart powered personal loans can help you pay off high interest debt 
all online with simple and easy to understand payment terms. Upstart has helped over 1.8 million customers on their path to financial freedom. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, Upstart can help you get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. Upstart knows that you're more than just your credit score. So rather than just looking at your credit score alone, Upstart's model considers other factors such as your income, employment, and other information provided in your loan application to find you a smarter rate for your loan. You could check your rate in minutes for loans between $1,000 to up to $50,000 without impacting your credit score. You could even receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Don't wait and check your rate today at upstart.com slash off the record. That's upstart.com slash off the record to check your rate today. And don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined by your income, credit, and certain other information that you put on your loan application. Go to upstart dot com slash off the record That's back in those bad. days yeah because in in the future we went back to pitch shows Stupid. completely fucking different yeah. tone but, but that was like the beginning That's of you the wild, wild west yeah it was That's like that for a very long time though like even before that before i did my my uh the film gook mm -hmm. i did that film because i couldn't get a um i couldn't get casted at any agency unless they wanted to keep me for new media so they said oh, oh you can't act i was like Oh, I can't act, bitch! <laughs> so I made this fucking movie. Yeah, but we got this digital product. Yeah, here. exactly. Like, what the fuck? So literally, you do that film, it goes to Sundance, every fucking agent in Hollywood will knock at my door. And they're like, oh, I was like, I had a meeting with you, dude. You said I wasn't good enough. But see, that's like the weird thing. You just have to show these people what they're missing. How do they get your number out of nowhere? That's huh? fucking I don't know. They were at my house. <laughs> they straight call your address. Not your number. They got your address. I get phone calls. They're like, hey, I'm whatever, Tony Tran from CAA, whatever the fuck. I'm like, how the fuck do you even get my number? Tony Tran. James Wayne. That new man, motherfucker. I'm James Wayne from JJ's Cafe Place. I represent a triple boy. Who turned you down recently? I know. Recently? Dang. Most of them. Did you hit him up? Who turned you down? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you were asking, you were asking me a question. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, you got something? Yeah. I mean, probably the most amount of money we turned down was as Poriotics, we turned down a Vegas show at Cosmopolitan when they were first opening. <gasps> oh, shit. Wait, you mean like a residency? Yeah. Or how much? Oh, so, I don't remember how much. So you guys could have been like the Jabberwocky show? Yes. Yes. Whoa. So at that time... I'm so mad at Poriotic. I know, we're fucking dumbasses. Yeah. But at that time... <laughs> <laughs> at that time, yeah, Cosmopolitan hit us up, and they were like, yeah, we want a show, a Vegas show, because we're opening up this place called Cosmopolitan, and you guys would like be a show to rival the Jabberwockies, and we were like, oh, they're the homies, we don't really want to rival them. And at that time, we were a bunch of like 20, 21-year-olds. Yeah. So we nice. The worst yeah. business decision. Worst business decision. Yeah. And at that time, we were traveling the world. We were going to Germany, we were going to Russia. We are just like mm. hella traveling. Oh, you guys wanted pussy, huh? Yeah. You don't want hella wanted pussy. Yeah. And two, <laughs> you guys were crushing. Yeah. 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 Not local pussy. We wanted it overseas. <laughs> yeah. Want, and at that time, stressor? yeah, we were just like traveling. It's like, do you want to stay locked down or do you want to travel? And now that I look back at it, I'm just like, damn, we should have stayed locked. I just picture you sitting there and then two thought bubbles. One was a lot of cash and another one was naked bitches. And you went, pop. <laughs> <laughs> what, was the, what was the deciding factor with saying no to that? Well, I mean, other than like, Half the team wasn't 21 yet, so we didn't know what Vegas was like, That's and we didn't see it, and we didn't see what money was. <laughs> and we were just like, yeah, Girl, we were, just, we were sure a bunch of 19 or 20 year olds traveling the world. That was something. Yeah. Do you remember what that ballpark oh, number was? Do you remember what that ballpark number was? Uh, ballpark. Just make like, up a number. Like 30, 30 million. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. We'd end up like that. Yeah, probably. Oh, like, we'd probably still be there. Yeah. Wow. But hey, look at and the bright side. You're here, like, here now. Here now, baby. <laughs> here now. <laughs> Look at the bright side. <laughs> you said you shot a pilot? Yeah, because at the same time, we were also shooting like a possible reality TV show with like Wayne Brady. Oh. And so that cool. was going to go hand in hand with it. And Imagine then... he just freestyles Asian jokes at you guys the whole time. <laughs> yeah, that fucking dance, though. Yeah, Wayne Brady's tight. He's cool. Yeah, he's great. I remember I was so jealous of dancers back in the day because I remember like telling Bar like, man, was. so, well, because one, uh, well, I mean, comedians, we have a longer lifespan of uh, careers, so I'm not jealous about that. But when it comes down to it, it's like, <laughs> you have to damn. Kiss your ass first. Yeah, but when it comes well, down to it, burned you first <laughs> in my youth, you guys were traveling to all the cool countries 
with all the hottest girls because language was dance and physical. You Ooh, know what I mean? So yeah. you get the fucking tango and shit. Where it's like we we're stuck at the Asian shows, at the Asian club, in fucking English speaking universities with these fucking nerds and shit. Hey, shout yeah, out like, to the kids who brought us out, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> shout out. We need your money still. Thanks for the fundraisers you guys held <laughs> to pay for it. And thank you for showing me the best Chinese restaurant in your city every single time. <laughs> <laughs> Friends dorm. Oh, it's the worst Chinese food ever, dude. Oh, I know this dead best spot. I'm like, bro, you live out in Wichita. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think your Chinese food here is good at all. It's always like that. Yeah. Like, there's a best dim sum in Ithaca. <laughs> but was dancers it? are going to fucking, what, Russia, Brazil, all these places with the hottest women. Ooh, Russia's that's, really that's, dope right I now. I think that's the caveat is as a dancer, you can also latch on to a music artist's benefit as well. Which is hard now. Like our career copyrights. got fucking super uh, lengthened from being attached to LMFAO. Yeah, it got true. the lifespan fucking got Double, stretched, yeah. yeah. But that wasn't really us, you know. Like it's you got an opportunity from Red. Yeah. How did that happen? I mean, that was just all. It's like half luck, half opportunity. You didn't say, nah, bro, we're dancers. No, it's it's like it. <laughs> it, it literally came from making the judgment call. You know how sometimes when you're doing work, there's a chance to do something for free that's gonna suck, but. Could open up a door. It's like that. We so were you said a, there's a good opportunity. Yeah, because we hmm. we were doing uh, ABDC and we used their song, and that was like the first time that Elma Fields music got featured on MTV as like a someone was performing to it. So they were watching it. We didn't know that, but then we go to Wango Tango to just be. We were like a B-side throwaway outside of the gate performance in this <laughs> small ass stage, and then as we were there, uh, this other artist named Madcon who did the remix of Beggin back then. He oh. was on his way in and he was like an opener of the inside show at the actual stadium. And he goes, hey, I don't have no one on my team. Like, would you guys want to come in and just do a dance? Because I got like, there's no crowd and I just want more people on stage. And that was the judgment call of like, do we just do this real quick for nothing? And Good thing you didn't be like, what are you going to pay me, motherfucker? No, yeah, because because the, the exchange was it would get us into the real stage. Oh, yeah. That's oh, true. We were like, let's fucking do it. So we did it. I think, didn't, didn't we perform to all the Mad Con song on the show too? Yeah, we did. Yeah. But I mean, it was a popular breaking song yeah. like by mm. far. So we go in and we're in the, we're now in the main stadium, which we didn't even have access to. And then there we run into LMFAO. Mm. And then they go, they were like, yo, you're the guys that use our shit. And we were like, <laughs> guys, we're gonna sue you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You use our shit. Oh, you're up, motherfucker. Here's the paper. It's for me for free, or here's the paper. Yeah. 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 You're a quest yeah, crew, sir. you've been served. So we just were like tripping out that they even saw it, and we had a cool conversation, oh. took a photo. Mm. <clears throat> Didn't have any discussion about working together at all. Mm -hmm. And then uh, by chance, this fool runs into them two other times by total coincidence. Just randomly. It's like um, in line at a movie theater. Or what? I forget what the other time was. And then I think it was nice that we were both coming up together. You know, we did mm. the TV show and they, they were getting their hits with Lil Jon and stuff. And I think we were just talking about, oh, it would be great. We don't know how, but, you know, let's do something together. And so a lot of the Quest members started working with LMFAO at their live shows? It was all kind of like in one big bang because we were always talking about it with them and then they go, hey, let's do a dance thing of some sort. And then out of nowhere, they we were just fresh on their minds because he kept running into them. And then uh, LMFAO hits him up and goes, hey, we got an idea for a dance thing. Uh, maybe it's like a shuffle thing. And they nice. sent the song and it was every damn shuffle. And we were like, what the fuck does a banger? Yeah, that was Coco actually. That was the first thing we did with them. That's true. Yeah, was, wow. was yeah. a party rock anthem, and yeah. it was like the biggest. At thing. first, when um, so it was the their wardrobe stylist Coco that sent me the track, and at first I was like, this sucks. It's, it's horrible, you know. <laughs> yeah. You hated it. You liked it. I liked it. Like, it yeah, <laughs> way different from this one. <laughs> this one was like this is mind blowing. <laughs> And then I think though, also I, I came from a mindset of, you know, they wanted to do shuffling and back then, you know, we come from like a battle background and making all these shows and we wanted to do something new and different that people couldn't do. So to make something that everyone could do, it's like, what? What's the value in that? What's the point, you know? Oh, you're two fucking artists, man. Yeah. We, we were classic we b-boy mentality. Yeah. Yeah. But then it's like you start realizing it's like, oh, if you can actually make something and everyone could potentially have fun and you're stopping it, like, who's the fucking bad guy in this, you know? So it's like, like TikTok, like all these TikTok dances, exactly, people yeah. enjoy it because everybody can do exactly. it. Exactly. So it's like, okay, let's let's do it and see how it goes. And 
Yeah, we had no idea it was gonna blow up as much as the it funny did. The thing we never told anybody though is that uh, we were we were good at shuffling already because we were fucking making fun of it so much. <laughs> <laughs> What? Before practice, like fucking around. That's half the dance community. We would do yeah. it ironically all the time to just clown on it, and then when they were like, "Oh, we're gonna do it for real," we were like, "Okay, sure." We're ready. <laughs> <laughs> so like that whole music video, we're doing it. We want to crack up at ourselves practically. Yeah. Uh, and then all over us lamers are like, "How cool!" <laughs> <laughs> all of us were like, "Wow!" I'm trying to practice it, I couldn't Yo, do it. I can't show. And the whole time we're like fucking simpletons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even okay. when the video first came out, I was in Korea at the time and I like, called him yeah. from Korea and be like, did you watch it? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, damn, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but see, that's but crazy though. Won, like, You guys won the VMA Awards no, with that. It's because you beat us. Oh, the VMAs yeah. with that. Oh, for Bruno? Oh. Yeah, I have a VMA too. Yeah. Yeah. In your face! <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! I did lazy we song did the lazy the song. We did the monkeys? Oh, yeah! Oh, that was really good. That was really good. Yeah. That was good. Oh, yeah. well, it hash it out now, dude. All right, yeah, just yeah. get it all out, dude. Did you guys get to go to the VMA because of that? Yeah, we did. Wow, see, that's cool. That's, that's cool. sick, man. You guys that's weren't. So yeah, we were there for that. Yeah, yeah I thought so. You guys ever look back and kind of see like how crazy your lives are because of dance? Because dance wasn't like this before, like no. especially money opportunities. No, it's yeah. so fucking nuts because this was this was the career that everybody was like, you do this on the side for your fun shit. You're not gonna make a career out of this. Right. And then you guys literally made this into a business, which blows my fucking mind. Yeah. And yeah. yet we still fucking ended up here. I know. <laughs> We went like this and then went like this. This is, come on, you went from BMAs to JK News. You gotta be like, yeah. That was, that was the most hype I've ever heard that. When you say it like that, it doesn't sound so bad.